afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. Welcome, welcome in one and all to Courtside Heat, the podcast edition. And I'm alongside my co-host, the pod father himself, the man that Adrian Wojnarowski only dreams that he could be. I'm here with Josh. Josh, how are you, pal? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Man, if I was doing any better, I'd be twins. You know what I mean? Yes, he explained this to me every single week, so I think I finally got it. Probably not, but that is okay. Back-to-back weekend launches. You people should be very excited as we're going through the dog days of the NBA. MLB is kicking off. The NFL draft is next weekend. We won't be launch, um, launching next weekend. Or is it next weekend? No, it's the weekend after. Yeah, we got 12 days. So we won't we won't release one on the weekend during the NFL draft, right? <clears throat> because it's the NFL draft. So nobody competes with the NFL, not even Courtside Heat, the podcast edition. So Yeah, yeah, competing as the NFL will be tough. It's not the most ideal thing to do, but good news, we're, yeah, you can't compete with the NFL. I don't know what the good news is, but that is fine. I'm like the Mel Kuyper Jr. of the NBA. Oh, no, I think I am. No. I have sports analysts coming no, out of everywhere. No. You, you're the only th- you got a lot of things coming out of everywhere, but it's not sports <laughs> analysts. Oh, no. it's sports. All right, so here is the dealio, my people. You guys know the drill. If you're finding us on this podcast edition, you may have found us on iTunes, Google, SoundCloud. Spotify, all very cool stuff. But we're all over social media. And man, we need to start getting a boost to Instagram. We got a lot of sick stuff going on Instagram. Man, where are you guys at? Where are all the NBA sneakerheads at? But you can find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash courtside heat, facebook.com slash courtside heat. We own Parlor. We're the only basketball talk on Parlor. If you're not familiar with Parlor, pretty cool social media networking site. Kind of get away from all the goofiness of Twitter and Facebook. That's P-A-R-L-E-R dot com slash Courtside Heat to find us there. Find us on the Instagram machine, people. Where are you? Instagram dot com slash Courtside Heat NBA. We're also on the Rumble machine, kind of the alternative to YouTube. Love and Rumble, right? Rumble dot com slash Courtside Heat and the YouTubler. So YouTubler dot com slash Courtside Heat. We are also on Linktree. Linktree is kind of cool. I haven't really kind of figured out what Linktree is, but people seem to like it. They dig it. It's cool. We're also on Medium. Some of our some of our long form articles are on Medium. I don't know how often we're on there. We we're on there, you know, for a while. Then we stop back. Well, who knows? I don't know. But we should be there. Find us on Medium.com. Just do a search for Court Side Heat. We own Tumblr. The Tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-R, Tumblr.com slash Courtside Heat, T-U-M-B-L-R.com slash Courtside Heat. We are everywhere. Like, subscribe, rate, review, leave comments, retweet, share, post. <clears throat> Get in the conversation. This is the dog days of the NBA, right? And so... What better to kind of fill in the gaps of, you know, kind of not the greatest games in the world right now than the best in NBA news. You're getting that with CourtsideHeat.com. That is the mothership location. There is probably not a website out there that is dedicated to the NBA videos, long form and short form content like the mothership, which is CourtsideHeat.com. Find us. By the way. On the Rumble Machine and YouTubler, it's just not our podcast. We got some amazing videos from Jordan to Kobe to game winners to retrospect. I mean, we just got so much information out there. It's absolutely epic. And as you guys know, we got the swag that is in demand right now. So we got we got two sorts of things going on, right? We got the OG memorabilia. So if you go to courtsideheat.store, that will take you to the Macari machine. And on that Macari machine, you're going to find all of our sick NBA cards, all of our sick Goodwin cards, all of our sick starting lineup figures. We got books. We got DVDs. We got Michael Jordan Weedy boxes. We got Jason Tatum PSA cards. We got all that stuff happening 
on the Macari machine. But if you're following us on Instagram as well as the website, we came out with Quartzside Heat swag. But it's not just Quartzside Heat. We got lots of really cool stuff. It looks good. It's fun stuff. It's cool stuff. You got to check it out. What are some of the things that people can find with the swag? Yeah, so it's just not clothing. You can find mugs. You can find stickers. You can find whatever you want. Hoodies, depending on where you're at. And it varies in sizes and colors. You can find retro stuff for video gamers. If you want motivational stuff, we have that. Or if you just want fun phrases, we have that too. We have everything. I like corn. Yo, yeah, oh yeah that's, a, that's a popular one. It's a popular one. So look, you can get some swag. That's cool. It doesn't have to be all serious, right? You're not protesting and trying to burn something down every time you put, you know, a shirt or a hat or a mug on, right? You don't have to make a political stand. You people can just relax and have a little bit of fun in life like 99% of the world. Leave the 1% of the middle Mitchell midgets to do what they do. Now, before we jump into something really cool, uh, let's give out a shout out right now to the author of the week. So the author of the week, we have a budding author, a published author that Josh knows really well that is absolutely lighting up Amazon as we speak. Tell them, the people, about this author, the book, where it ranks right now, and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, so this is real cool. If you want, if you want a preteen, teenager, action-adventure book, this is this is the book to get. It's called The Rise of the Crimson Archer. And real quick, you can find it on Amazon. This is the most action-packed, engaging book that I've ever read. And that says a lot because I don't get into That says a lot. Ex- yeah, because I don't like most bo- action books. But this one is really engaging, really well done. And I'm I'm just um, really proud of it. So, but yeah, me, uh, her name is Mihaila Palachuk. You can find her on Amazon just by searching her name or Rise of the Crimson Archer. And right now, her book is so lightning hot. It's trending number eight on Amazon's top um, new teen and preteen book section. So, a really cool deal. It's called Rise of the Crimson Archer. And you guys should buy it because it's one of the best things right now. Yeah, so you go to the Amazon machine. You click on the little goofy Amazon box, right? And you put a search in for... Put a search in for... Oh, oh yeah. If you put a search in for Rise of Crimson Archer. Okay. And that's it. It's it's that easy. Again, what's the genre? Um, I believe it would be teen, preteen and uh, teen... Action adventure. Yeah, it's not just for preteen and teen, right? I mean, if you're in your early 20s, action adventure is really cool. Check it out. Uh, very cool thing. All right. That said, we've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. It's trending. It's hot. People are inquiring. Don't miss out on your opportunity to become an entrepreneur with HistoryProves.com. HistoryProves.com is going to turn out to be one of those domains and websites that can absolutely positively change your life and maybe have an impact on so many people across the interwebs right now. There's a lot of people that want to get their voice out, opinions out, and all of that kind of good stuff. Be that person too. No matter where you think you are, if you want to share history in a different light, whether that's ancient history, recent history, current history, every day that we live becomes history. And you can begin to become an entrepreneur, own a site, own a business that's making you money, that's going to drive major advertisers to it. So if you got a passion for history, you got a passion for current events, you got a passion for writing, do it. If you want to bring a, a build a website that you can bring in writers from all over the world and and they can give their take on history as they see it through their eyes, through their culture, through their land, through their motherland, how cool is that? Right now, happening, historyproves.com is being sold. Check it out. Just simply go to historyproves.com, type that into your Google machine, historyproves with the S, plural, historyproves.com. Type that in. It'll take you there. And then I want you to imagine the possibilities. You're not getting an already made website that already has a made narrative, that already has this. You have the ability to be able to start from scratch 
Take everything that's in your mind's eye of how you want to create and build and do and have and say and make it yours. It's the ultimate blank canvas of opportunity. The domain is available, but it's not going to be available forever. If you've been sitting, you've been a podcast listener, and you've been thinking about it, then do it. Stop thinking about it and simply do it. That's the socials. That's the websites. This is where you connect with us. You're on the podcast. Let's talk about a little bit of basketball. Topic number one. Let's talk about the epic fact of the weekend. New one. I like it. What do you got? This is really exciting. And here we go. This occurred on April 16th, 1967, where Will Chamberlain brought down 38 rebounds in a win against the San Francisco Warriors. Now, here's the real cool part. He set an all-time NBA record for the most rebounds in a half, which would be 26 rebounds. Well, that means the stats were pretty cheesy then. Because if you got 26 rebounds in one half, what happened in the second half? Well, it just depends how many minutes he was playing in the second half. And if he getting 26 rebounds in the first half and I don't know how many minutes, I, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know how long the cores are back then. But the same. Oh, right. Oh, it's 24. Oh, yeah. 24 minutes a half. I would say so different, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's still you brutal. You're courtside heat. How do you You're know? still okay, I got confused. But still, bringing down 26 rebounds in 24 minutes is really tough. The yeah. only other person that could do 38 rebounds in a game was Bill Russell. And he actually did on the same day. It's just I found this style Oh, they got Both guys got 38 rebounds in the same day? That's yeah. actually kind of cool. Look, rebounds meant something back then. Um, it's, it's a shame. Um, that was, that was such a big part, uh, of the game was actually, you know, fundamentals, blocking out, getting rebounds, that sort of thing. That defined Dennis Rodman. Sure. I mean, he made an entire career out of defense and, and rebounds. I mean, when you think about the guys that have, you know, have come into the league, these look, the fact that Shaquille O'Neal didn't average 26 rebounds a game says everything that you know about, about him. Um, I mean, there, there are certain guys you look at it, they should be so absolutely dominating on the boards. But when you looked at Rodman, Rodman didn't have the frame. He didn't have the physique. He didn't have the height. He just had the want. And, and it was just, it was just amazing for, to see him going after the basketball, doing what it is that he needed to do. Uh, because he had no offensive game. When I said he had no offensive game, he had no offensive game. When I said he has no offensive game, literally, I mean, even when he was all alone going up for a dunk, you still thought to yourself, there's 50 50 shots he's going to miss. Yeah, right? well, he ride and died by his defense because he had to. Yeah. And he was very good by it. But that man had, he was a madman on the court. If he, was gonna, if he wasn't going to get a rebound, he was going to get a steal. He was going to do something. Like, I think at one point, everyone had to fear what he was on the court because he didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. All right, topic number two. Let's break down a little breaking news. What you got for us? This, this actually occurred yesterday, and this could hurt the Jazz as Donovan Mitchell suffers a little ankle sprain. Good news, though, they're hoping this is not going to be a serious in, uh, injury. But there's no timetable currently available as the MRI was scheduled for last night. So, I don't know. How do you want to look at this? Because I say this is a big deal because the only other piece that Utah has is Rudy Gobert. And let me just say, he's been great this season. He, especially his defense. He's been, he's been coming up big sometimes. Yeah, I mean, look, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell is a, is a player, uh, is all of that. Uh, look, let me let me take a let me back up for a second and let me talk about the Utah Jazz. Uh, the Utah Jazz uh, made a very controversial stand in this this era of woke this week, um, and it's it's truly a shame. So the the Utah Jazz uh, put out in conjunction with another organization, I think, uh, about uh, offering a scholarship, but whites were excluded. White kids were excluded. And this is, this is a sad and pathetic uh, testament to the time that we live in, that an organization uh, would have uh, a scholarship contest for all kids except white kids. 
Um, I understand that sometimes you want to do, you know, a Hispanic scholarship, an African American scholarship. Imagine the outrage if somebody actually had a white Anglican scholarship. But you know, gosh forbid we would use common sense. But to set up a scholarship um, to have everybody be able to participate, but but white children is egregious. It's disgusting. The Utah Jazz should be ashamed of themselves. The governor of Utah, who supports the Jazz's decision, saying, what's their choice? Could you imagine the outrage if the Utah Jazz set up a scholarship for just white kids? And, and that's really uh, upsetting. If you're going to do a scholarship, the idea behind the scholarship is you pick those that are either in the most need, have demonstrated some sort of performance that you're looking for, regardless of race, color, creed, so on and so forth. Um, this is disappointing. It's disheartening. It, it's it's a trend of, of a ridiculous woke culture. Uh, woke is a cancer. That cancer has infiltrated every aspect of sports, and that's a shame for sports. Here we are having a great conversation about all things NBA. And then once again, we got to talk about a buffoon decision by buffoon people who think that they're doing something and all they're doing is creating a larger divide. And it's sad. The Utah Jazz should be disgusted with themselves. I wish nothing but the most horrifying events to happen for this organization. I don't want players to get hurt, but I want them to suffer the worst possible losses. I want them to be heartbroken at every particular turn. And that's how I really feel. Because what you're doing is you're not allowing people just to make a choice contingent upon their favorite team against a rival. Now you're requiring to make people make a choice based upon your politics. Your politics are backwards. They're ridiculous. They're disgusting. And, and, and I abhor everything that the Utah Jazz stand for. Am I surprised by this? No, uh, because for the most part, they're run by an ideological cult, which is Mormonism, which is not Christianity. That is about as woke as it could be. And, and it's sad. So all of that said, as much as I'd like to talk about Donovan Mitchell and Quinn Snyder and all the different things about the Utah Jazz, the truth of the matter is their overall organization, their leadership, their lack of ethics is disgusting. And I say we move on. Uh, yeah, thank you for bringing because I did not see that. I think that's very important to touch on. So yeah, if you want to, I'm ready to move on. Let's move on. So now this is a more serious one. Mm -hmm. So this is about Marcus Aldridge who has to retire after having a scary injury. Now, we're not talking about career-ending knee injuries that we've seen players go down with. No, this was, this was, he suffered an irregular heartbeat during his last game with the Nets. He said after a few games, his condition grew worse. That's when you're like, no, Moss, I can't do it anymore, because that... Because messing with the heart, you can't, kind of can't do that. Yeah, I mean, look, he didn't have much left in the gas tank anyway. LaMarcus Aldridge is, is, is a fine post player, was in Portland, uh, was fine in San Antonio. Uh, bad coaching in San Antonio, like most things are out of San Antonio. Believe me, uh, if not for Tim Duncan and David Robinson, San Antonio would be the most irrelevant organization. And Popovich would have been fired three years into his run because, hey, he's just not that good. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people think about you know Chris Bosh and and his heart condition or his his wasn't really a heart condition his was more was a heart condition but I think it was more about blood clotting and yeah and different things along those lines. Look, you never like to see a guy have to retire uh, because of uh, an irregular heartbeat or something that has to do with a heart. You know, we look at these guys as indestructible. You know, professional athletes they can you know they can do anything, but they got a ticker just like you and I and. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of crazy. So, yeah, big props. I mean, look, it's it's funny. Um, uh, Julian Edelman uh, retired this week from the NFL. Uh, people were on, you know, social media doing their thing. Is Julian Edelman a Hall of Famer? Blah, blah, blah. I don't think Julian Edelman's a Hall of Famer. Uh, but I look at a lot of guys like Heinz Ward as an example from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lots more catches, lots more yards. Super Bowl title, too. He's not in the Hall of Fame. 
reason I bring that up is LaMarcus Aldridge, right? I mean, is he a Hall of Famer? I think he's the Hall of Good, but I don't think he's a, a, maybe even a, the Hall of Great for a period of time. And in Portland, he was just a part of some really, 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 really bad Portland teams, unfortunately. Uh, Portland is where talent goes to die. Uh, they were only relevant for a few short years there, and they ran up against Michael Jordan. And the only way Clyde Drexler actually got an NBA title was by going to Houston, ironically. So um, I think Lamar Lamarcus Aldridge would be in the Hall of Good, the Hall of Very Good, uh, but certainly not great. I don't know his career stats off the top of my head. I'm not entirely sure that it's that it's relevant. I think oftentimes you can look at a guy and say, we can't tell the history of basketball without him. Like, you can't tell the history of basketball without Bird, Magic, Jordan, and, and all of that sort of mm -hmm. stuff, right? There's a lot more Hall of Famers. Um, there's a lot more Hall of Famers uh, than just those guys. But we talk about those guys uh, specifically because you can't tell the story of the NBA, you know, without them. And you look at other Hall of Famers, you know, you can't tell the story of the, the NBA without Will Chamberlain, without Dominique Wilkins, without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, without Isaiah Thomas, without Clyde Drexler, Clyde the Glide, right? You can't tell without Patrick Ewing and Akeem Olajuwon and, and all of these different things. And I think one day Steph Curry is going to be a Hall of Famer, you know, for sure. Um, but can you tell uh, Shaquille O'Neal, another great example, right? You can't tell the story of the NBA with, without Shaquille O'Neal. I don't think you can tell the story of the NBA without Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, right? Um, Ray Allen. But can you tell the story or the history of the NBA without LaMarcus Aldridge? And I think you can. And I think oftentimes... <clears throat> I think oftentimes that is Kobe Bryant. Can you tell the history of the NBA? With that? Of course not, right? So, I mean, there are so many of these guys, and what happens is we, we, we all suffer from recentism. And recentism is, well, James Harden is the greatest all-time, or, or Kevin Durant, or LeBron James. And, I mean, even with Jordan, right? I mean, before Jordan, there were so many. Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, we talked about those guys. And Pistol Pete Maravich, and I'm not putting him in the class of Jordan, Again, you can't tell the story of the NBA without any of those guys. And I don't think that LaMarcus Aldridge would be in the top 100, mm -hmm. 150, 200, 300 NBA players. He's in the hall of very good. Yeah. You know? Now, I have, like, a question I think can be answered. Since he played a few games with the Nets, and let's just say Nets won a championship, couldn't he be eligible to win a ring at that point since he played on the team? I don't know. I don't know, but... Uh, look, I mean, at the end of the day, what does that mean? I mean, will he take the ring if they gave it to him? Sure, but he knows that, you know, he wasn't a part of that that team and didn't have a contribution. Putting an NBA champ look, putting an NBA championship after somebody's name doesn't make them a Hall of Famer. Right. There's a lot of people that have won NBA championships. Um, will Purdue. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. No, look, uh, B.J. Armstrong, Craig Hodges. I mean, you can think of you know Tony Kukoc. I don't. I think maybe Tony Kukoc. Not, I don't know if he is or he isn't. But I mean, there's a lot of guys that have won. And Vinny Johnson, the microwave for instant offense for the Detroit Pistons. John Sally, James Edwards, right? Uh, there's a lot of guys that won NBA titles, but it doesn't necessarily make them Hall of Famers. Uh, it's not like NFL quarterbacks, although there's a lot of NFL quarterbacks that have won a Super Bowl that are not in the Hall of Fame, right? Trent Dilfer coming to mind, who just happened to be the luckiest quarterback in the history of the NFL when he played for the Baltimore Ravens uh, that dominant year. So was Kukoc in the Hall of Fame? I don't think so. I think it was a snub. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, so it's, you know, it's interesting. So, look, I think, again, I think, unfortunately for a lot of fans, They'll remember kind of mediocre LaMarcus Aldridge in, in San Antonio. Yeah. Um, the truth of the matter is his best years were in Portland, and it's it's not even close. So, I mean, even even if he was a, even if he played out this whole season and had a championship run with the Nets, how much of a contributor would he have been? I mean, I guess it's hard to say. Uh, I think it's really hard to say. I think the dynamic of that team is really quirky and interesting, to, to say the very least. I, I just look for me. I just hope that he's well. Uh, he's made a ton of dough. Oh, yeah. He should never have to worry about you know a dollar for for the rest of his life. Hoping that is the case. But for me, 
Um, Hollow, very good. Same here. Yeah. You, if now you bring up the Nets, the Nets have Kyrie, Harden, Durant, um, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. I think also DeAndre or Jordan. That's all odd of town, but all mixed personalities. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how they're they're assembling this team. I, I hope it's more than just a two year window. Um, it's interesting. None of those guys move the needle. Uh, I, th- I mean, think about it. You know, we talk about big threes, and, and we talked about Boston's big three, and you know, Pierce, Garnett, and Allen, and and you know, you can throw in Rondo. You know, it's kind of like three point two five. And then we talked about the big three in, in Miami with LeBron and Bosh and Wade. When you look at the collection and the names of the Brooklyn Nets, with you know Durant, Kyrie. Blake, DeAndre, and Harden. Harden should really, so it's really Harden, Durant, and Kyrie. Do you notice how nobody cares? Like, nobody labels them as the greatest big three, the next big three, the unstoppable big three. Just, they just don't, they don't have the same panache. It doesn't have the same sort of, you know, whatever to it. Yeah, but the only time they were labeled a, a potential big three is like when they were being assembled. Now people are just like, oh, you guys got these free well, I think I think it's jumped the shark, the whole big three thing. That's kind of – the NBA is turning into a three-on-three league anyway. Um, you know, I wish the professor uh, from, from Streetball was in the NBA now. He would dominate. It's something you should look up, all of you. Look up the professor on Facebook. Yeah. The guy's moves are, are absolutely sick. Let me say one thing about Kyrie Irving just because we brought him up because we're talking about LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, look, Kyrie Irving is uh, an interesting and strange individual sometimes. But what I love about Kyrie Irving, I, I love this one thing that he did this week. Uh, but he got a couple tees. He and I don't know who the other guy was. They both got tossed out of the game. And what happens is uh, everybody is uh, you know so conscious of the N-word. I won't say the N-word because I don't want us to get thrown off of you know iTunes and Google and all of that. Um, but he found it very disrespectful that black people call each other that, whether in the heat of the moment or whether as a term of endearment. And he said, look, if this is bad, it should be bad across the board. And I don't really understand why we're calling each other that, and that should be okay. But when other people call us that, it's it's a huge deal. And so bravo to you, Kyrie Irving. That was a great stance. Again, I think a lot of the other things that you do – and you know, taking a tour of Canada with Drake when you were on hiatus in the middle of the... I have no idea what goes through your brain half the time. Um, regardless of that, that was... that was It was elo- eloquently said, far better than how I portrayed your own words. I think it's something that should be eliminated from the lexicon, from the language, from black people to black people, white people to black people, black people to white people, white people to Asian people, Asian people to black people. If it's a derogatory term, it's a derogatory term across the board. And um, so bravo, Kyrie Irving. Uh, some of that Duke education did run off on you, but I think it's more of a common sense approach and how you are feeling. I wish that would have been a story. Uh, but that's unfortunately, that's not a woke take that NBA would run with or the ESPN would run with, right? Uh, if there was a big controversy of a white guy saying that to you, I mean, it would be 24-7 breaking news on NBC. But I think I really wish that others would have picked up on the hypocrisy and the hypocritical use of the word. And and so kind of here we are. So bravo to you, Kyrie Irving. I, I respect that a great deal. So we go from the very good LaMarcus Aldridge to the dookie Kyrie Irving to another dookie. What could have been a dookie just signed with the Celtics on a two-year deal. Who is it? Big deal, little deal. So this will be Jabari Parker, who is originally... Jabari. Jabari Parker, who is originally Milwaukee Bucks, signs a two-year deal with the Boston Celtics. Um, going off your question, is it a big or a deal? Um, it's like a little to a medium deal. I think you can add some talent, but here's the thing. Parker was never left up to a height that second overall pick should have. No, no, not even. Yeah, look. He, he's like more of like a role player bench player. That's how Listen, I see him. Jabari Parker is six points, four rebounds, one assist. Yeah. He's a role player. He's legs. He's minutes. He's athleticism. He's a little bit of defense. It's spelling your players. Again, this is, I, I, you know, it's like quarterbacks coming out of USC. Name me one quarterback out of USC outside of Jim Plunkett that has ever really accomplished anything. I know you don't know the answer, so I won't ask you to know the answer. But the truth of the matter is quarterbacks out of USC 
um, are, are they're, they're beloved. They win Heismans. They're, they're the best looking. They got the best arms. They got the best cheerleader girlfriends. They have the most opportunity coming into the NFL. And from Sam Darnold to Matt Leinart to Carson Palmer to every other um, uh, every other Cody Kessler, every other USC quarterback out there, they're great college players, very little potential in the N uh, NFL. The same really can be said for for Duke and its basketball players. Now, look, have there been exceptions to the rule? I think people forget and sometimes underestimate how great or very good Christian Leitner was. What could have been with Grant Hill? Danny Ferry had a serviceable NBA career, uh, not so much as, as a front office professional. Uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, the jury's very much still out. The truth of the matter is, is that most Duke players just simply don't live up to the expectation. Will Zion? I don't know. I was on ESPN.com yesterday for just a moment because I wanted to see a quick score on something. And unfortunately, Outkick.com doesn't have a ticker. Wish they had a ticker because I would never go into ESPN for anything. But, <coughs> go ahead, say something like joke. Okay, well, I was just going to say, because I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with the 2014 draft because you had Andrew Wiggins number one, Parker number two, and B number three, Gore number four, and I'm just looking down the list. You had Zach Levine, who could have been easily instead of Parker. But it's all well no, good. That's, that's in hindsight. But but so here here's what was I saying? What was I talking about? I was talking about Duke players. Uh, oh, I'll kick ESPN. Oh, so I was on ESPN, and their lead story yesterday for their insider that you got to pay for ESPN Plus or whatever it is was what's next for Lonzo Ball from the trade block to the cornerstone of the team. Right. I mean, so I say that because. They may have something there with Lonzo and Zion. Wrong coach, obviously, with Stan Van Gundy for a lot of reasons. Uh, but that'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see how much money they give him to stay. But the um, only reason I'm talking about this is because of, of Zion. Is because of Zion. So that's kind of an important thing right there. And I know this has become a weekly occurrence in, in regards to my take. Look, nobody used to love Duke more than me. But the fact of the matter is... Like Jabari Parker, they get drafted high, they fade, it never seems to work out. We can go through countless examples of NBAers that just don't have the pedigree. Uh, Duke is a force to be reckoned with in the NCAA. There's no question about it. But them actually producing uh, all-stars consistently, uh, not so much. So that's my rail on Duke. That's Jabari Parker. Big deal, no deal, little deal. I mean, look. Uh, I trust Danny Ainge, and if Danny Ainge sees something in Jabari Parker, well, that's good enough for me. Right. Because Danny Ainge uh, knows what his team needs. Uh, but and I will say this real quick, mm -hmm. talking about the Celtics. Uh, Brad Stevens went hired out of Butler, who was a half-court shot away from beating Duke for the national title, uh, by the way, which I'm sure you remember quite well. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Um, this is becoming a do-or-die situation uh, for Brad Stevens. Uh, his name came up recently in the Indiana Hoosier job search that obviously went to Mike Woodson, you know, uh, former yeah. uh, whatever, uh, over, at, uh, over at the Knicks. But <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is that, um, uh, yeah, it's, um, Brad Stevens uh, needs to, uh, <coughs> if your guy Brad Stevens needs to step up. You know, he took this team to a point, right? And <clears throat> people are talking about him being the best coach in the NBA. Right. That Now it's just like, I don't know, Brad has got to keep giving that push because they have the talent. It's not their lack of talent. Jason Kim's the only guy. They have the talent. Now Brad Seen just needs to be a good head coach and push them through it, guide them, coach them, put more leadership in their guys or even himself. So I mean, at this point, this is this is kind of what kind of what we're looking at here. Um, uh, you know, he needs to start winning uh, in the NBA playoffs. I understand. You know, Kemba's been injured and this and that. He's got a very talented team. 
LeBron left the East. Now, I understand the Brooklyn Nets are loaded. I understand the Philadelphia 76ers are loaded. Spolstra will do an amazing job with the Miami Heat, like he always does, right? And they're loaded uh, with talent. But Boston is also loaded. And it's time for Brad Stevens to put together game plans in a playoff series to where his team can beat those loaded teams. Uh, because if he's a guy that can get him to the second round, there's a lot of guys out there that can get the Boston Celtics to the second round, maybe even the semifinals, that whole thing. And, and I just, I think it's time for Brad Stevens to, to take that next step. Um, I don't know. I'm not saying his window's closing, uh, but the, the window's starting to come down a little bit because he's had a lot of assets. Ainge has given him a lot of rope. A lot of people, a lot of players, and, you know, the Hayward experience didn't work out. What could have been if he didn't blow out his ankle game one of his career with the Celtics? Who knows? Then you got the bubble. I know a lot of these guys are getting passes because of all the the strange the strangeness with COVID and all of that. But it's time. Since we were talking about the Celtics, I figured to throw it out there. Topic number four in breaking news. Somebody has torn their left ACL. Yeah, so Jamal Murray of the Denver Nuggets have torn his left ACL. Now, this was a no-contact injury as he felt awkward on his left knee. Now, if you watch the video on YouTube of where you got it from, you can see this was no normal injury on a knee because when he fell down, he was just grabbing, clawing, trying to just relieve pain. And now, this was with 50 seconds remaining on the game against the Warriors. This is really bad time with 50 seconds remaining. Not saying that you could have won anything, just meaning that with 50 seconds you were not hoping to have your star player or one of them to be that case to go down with an injury. But this is now, this is very significant in my mind because you have a torn ACL, he's not coming back, and now you have to adjust. Yeah, sometimes there's no contact injuries, right? You know, Kobe with his Achilles right. and, you know, those, you know, they're cutting, they're doing things and, you know, tendons or tendons and, and all of that. This is a huge deal, right? I mean, this this takes Utah from being a really super interesting pick, a team that could likely compete against the Suns and the Lakers, to a team that, that virtually has no chance. I mean, um, you know, Denver, yeah, Denver was super interesting. And so we'll we'll see, We you know, between James Wiseman, now Jamal Murray, season-ending injuries going all the way around. I mean, that's a tough blow. Jamal Murray is a heck of a ball player. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super injuries, but that's, that's the NBA. Everybody has to deal with injuries, right? And this is what good teams do. They overcome injuries, whether that be Anthony Davis, whether that be Devin Booker, whether that be whoever, right? And those guys didn't go down with injuries. Although it seems like Anthony Davis is always dealing with some sort of yeah. nagging little injury. It's the team that can manage health manage their players, and all of that. There's no way to manage Jamal Murray. A no-contact injury doesn't have anything to do with minutes, low time, or anything like that. Um, it happens. It's a part of the game of basketball. Uh, but it's, yeah. So, I mean, look, it's unfortunate. Uh, Denver, um, again, would have been a really interesting and sort of fun team uh, for sure. Uh, we'll see. So, uh, prop, uh, you know, uh, big ups to him. Uh, hope he's back as soon as he possibly can next year. Um, he's a great ball player. It would have been interesting to see what they can do. I still like the Suns coming out of the West. Uh, I really do. And I say that in part because I am a homer. I get that. Uh, and so I appreciate that all at the same time. So, uh, breaking news again, who's inducting Kobe Bean Bryant into the NBA Haller of Famer? That will be Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan. What do you think? I really like this because I seen this was right for him to do because you should have seen Michael Jordan just like talk about Kobe like Kobe passed went on the man was tearing like just tearing up in the eyes and whatnot. I think it's gonna be a special moment. I think this is the right moment to have, especially for someone that Kobe grew up with, always having Jordan by his side, able someone to text with, able to play against. Look, here's the deal. It was often said that. During a Kobe Bryant interview, if you closed your eyes and just listened, you'd swear it was Michael Jordan. 
uh, the intensity, the answers, the the accountability to himself, his team, how he felt. Kobe Bryant will always be, again, everybody has to deal with bouts of recentism. And recentism tells us that LeBron's obviously got to be better than Jordan. We have been saying on your site and this podcast forever, the closest thing to Michael Jordan that has ever existed without question is Kobe Bryant. I would take Kobe Bryant over LeBron James any day of the week and twice on Saturday. Um, not because he died, not because people are hailing him in a hero. And all. I remember Kobe Bryant, the basketball player. I remember Kobe Bryant saying, you fools can't make it happen. I'll go score 60. I saw Kobe Bryant will championships. I saw Kobe Bryant the reason to continue the Lakers dynasty. I've seen Kobe Bryant acquiesce to Phil Jackson's system. I've seen Kobe Bryant acquiesce to Shaquille O'Neal and still become an explosive star. I've seen Kobe Bryant do it all. And I'm telling you, the closest thing ever to Michael Jordan, he's not Michael Jordan, the closest thing ever to Michael Jordan is Kobe Bryant, and it's not even close. And and I think it's it's fitting that Jordan would induct him into the Hall of Fame. Jordan will never say that Kobe was as close to him as anybody. He may. Uh, but Kobe Bryant is the quintessential winner. He was the quintessential competitor. He had a fire like Jordan. Look, you can when you saw Jordan play and Kobe play, there was a fire. There was this sense of dominance. There was this sense that when this man got the ball in his hands. There wasn't a human being that could stop him. Nobody else ever in the history of the NBA has given off that sense like those two men. Not Bird, not Magic, not Kareem, not Zeke, not Russell, not Chamberlain, not Dr. J, not Dominique Wilkins, none of those guys. Not LeBron. The unfortunate thing is we live in what happened today's society? Ooh, LeBron did a dunk. He's the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Kobe was doing things that were unimaginable, just like LeBron, coming out of high school, could have went to Duke, right? Went to Lower Marion in Philadelphia. <clears throat> his dad was obviously an NBA player, World Be Free, changed his name to World Be Free. And um, look, Kobe, uh, again, if you're a student of the game of basketball, you know. And if you don't think this, then you don't know basketball. Kobe Bryant was the closest thing to Jordan, will be the closest thing to Jordan that ever existed, and it's not even fundamentally close. Yeah, I totally agree with you because you just tell Kobe took a team at one point. He Kobe was a real leader. He was just like, he's going to do anything. He's like, if you don't want to get rebounds, I'll do it. He just out-hustled everybody. Well, plus he played defense, too. Right. Well, look, LeBron can play defense. And when you look, what makes it so frustrating about LeBron James is that he is so genetically gifted. He's huge with skill. He is a freight train coming down the lane. (laughs) LeBron should legitimately never be able to be stopped because of his body type and his athleticism. He just doesn't have the same switch as Michael and Kobe. Um, so there it is. Look, I, it'll be a cool thing. The Naismith Hall of Fame, very cool thing. We'll watch it. We'll bring it to you live. We'll give, uh, we'll give our, we'll give our thoughts and, and all of those different things on it. Um, so there we go. Uh, you know what? No reason to even break down the jazz. I know you wanted to talk about the jazz. Could we survive? You know, Aaron, Aaron Gordon, Joe, you know, come on. They're done. No, no, yeah, I don't know. They're done. Nikhil Jokic is gonna be. Okay. It's gonna be the MVP. Who did he ever beat? Oh come on! Who do you ever? I see the Jazz can still go to the playoffs. They got Michael Porter. Of course, they're in first place. Well, I'm just saying they're gonna go deep to the playoffs. No, they're not. Yes. No, they're not. They have Aaron Gordon, Nikhil Jokic, first Michael Porter, good bench. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second there, Spartacus. 
They're in first place right now. They won't be in first place when the season ends without Jamal Murray. Uh, they're in fourth seed. They're not. Yeah, they are. The Utah... Oh, no. Whoops. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the idiot Utah Jazz. I'm sorry. That was great. Uh, the Utah Jazz are going to have a precipitous demise, so I can't wait for that. Uh, no. Look, if the playoffs started today, do you know who they who they start with? Um, not the top of my head. The Lakers. Round one. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, good news. If they start today, Anthony Davis is still not back. And LeBron, you know, he's not back either. Or I think he is. I don't know. Uh, but I think he got a chance. Nikhil Jokic will be interesting with him. Michael Porter Jr., he's averaging 17-7. Jokic is averaging 26-10. And, and Gord's averaging 11-4 just with uh, the Nuggets this year. So I think we're going to make it to the semifinals. Maybe not, but I think they'll put up a good fight. It's going to be interesting how they adapt without Jamal Murray because you had Jamal Murray who put an electrifying season on in the NBA bubble. And then you come in and he carries that momentum with him into this season. So I think it will be something interesting. Can they survive? I think they can survive a little bit, but not deep. I don't think they could go deep to the pot, but they won't. I don't want to say this. I think they won't survive, but they'll probably a great fight. We'll see. Look, I mean, this is this is the opportunity for Aaron Gordon to do something, right? right. I mean, he's been stuck uh, in uh, Orlando uh, forever. Uh, so now here's his opportunity. Now Jamal Murray's down. It's him and Jokic, right? Michael Porter Jr. is okay, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> this is his time. He's got a chance to lead with Jokic this team to do something. But if the playoffs literally started today, they start against the Lakers, they will get busted up so bad. Well, you got to remember, though, if they did start today, the Lakers are not fully healed. They have no Anthony Davis, no LeBron. Okay. If the playoffs started today, LeBron would be there. Right, I'm just saying. LeBron if would, you're going off the injury report. LeBron would be in a coma. And he'd still go out there, and he, he could put 30 on Michael Porter Jr., Jokic or Aaron Gordon. Literally. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. It doesn't listen. They bite. It's Jokic over. Is great. Jo Jokic is very good. He's in the hall of good. His career is still going on. I think he can no. win MVP. Is there gonna be between Embiid or Jokic? It, it's not gonna be Jokic. It is gonna be Jokic. I hope you're right, but it's not gonna be Jokic. We'll see. It's interesting. With with Jamal Murray, been a lot of fun. Boy, right. it's been a lot of fun to watch because nobody wants the Lakers to lose more than this guy right here. The only way it would be more fun if the Lakers lost in the Western Conference Finals to the Suns as D-Book is putting the dagger right in LeBron's heart. That would make me so happy. That, that would just that would just cement my life. That would be the greatest thing ever. LeBron James will not lose to Jokic and Gordon. Bank it. What else you got? Okay, this one was interesting. I want to get your take on this. False. Well, um, this was not a true or oh, false, okay, but you know what? We can have a true or false. Um, so coming to topic number four, I want us to have a real talk per se, yeah. because many NBA executives are claiming that injuries are happening more often because of condensed schedule. How much do you believe that? Because they believe that COVID-related problems are seeing skyrocketing in injuries, that they need to make up games due to this, that... Um, compressing schedules are just taking a wear and tear on people's bodies that they're hitting a high blowing point on injuries. I don't see I that. don't know if it's a condensed schedule. Look, I don't know what training camps were like. Uh, I don't know what practices are like. I don't know what the conditioning is going on. I don't know how these guys... Look, LeBron James spends literally $1 million a year on his body. How much are NBA players uh, investing into their body? There's something that LeBron is doing that works, right? Because he's never had a serious injury in his career. Is it luck? Part of it. But the other part of it is he spends a great deal of his time on his body. How many of these other guys do that? I don't know. Look, here's what I know. Uh, it's just like baseball. Um, <laughs> grown up for me, uh, there was no seventh inning guy, eighth inning guy, a top of the ninth guy, and then the closeout guy, you know, for the last two outs in the ninth. It wasn't this pitching by committee. 
Nolan Ryan would go out there, and if he had to throw 135 pitches, he would. If Roger Clemens had to throw 135 pitches, he would. If Dennis Oil Cam Boyd would have to go out there and throw 135 pitches, he would. Now, they're pulling guys out of no hitters because they've hit 85 pitches. They got pitchers on pitch counts, right? Because of Tommy John this and this sort of surgery and that sort of surgery. I think the conditioning of athletes have changed because everything is getting load management. Look, again, Michael Jordan didn't have load management. Kobe Bryant didn't have load management. Maybe LeBron wants to have load management, but LeBron's body, even at his age, will not break down over load if he didn't have load management. His body could endure in countless NBA seasons. And he goes deep all the time into them, plus the Olympics, plus All-Star Games, plus NBA Finals. This guy barely gets any time off. So do we need to do load management? Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't want to play, you know, the Oklahoma City Thunder on an off Thursday in February. And I don't blame him, right? Unfortunately, the, this, this whole connect, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it's today's athlete, uh, the analytics within the game, load management, minutes, conditioning, how has COVID affected practices and conditioning and all of that sort of stuff. I think it's different. What did what did Giannis say uh, during during the lockdown before the bubble? He didn't even pick up a basketball for how long? It was several <clears throat> months. Right. It's just it's just different. This is a guy that should have a fully indoor, full size basketball court in his house because he has more money and he knows what to do with. It's just it's just different. Non-contact injuries like Jamal Murray has nothing to do with, it's not Madden. It's not Madden to where, you know, uh, it's the old Darren McFadden rule. That <laughs> yeah. Had, right? He gets the ball too many times, takes all those hits, right, because you won't run out of bounds or do anything like that, and then he tears an ACL. It's not like that in real life. These guys, these guys should be built for an 82-game season, playoffs. There used to be back-to-back-to-back, back-to-back, day off, back-to-back. It's, it's all in how they're training their players. The body can handle it. I mean, it's a great topic, um, but it, it, executives are a part of the problem. It has nothing to do with the scheduling. The executives that are managing the coaches, managing the strength and training staff, and all of those different things um, are, are causing problems. Here's the other thing, too, that you got to remember. Um Weights play a really big part. If you looked at Jordan, Jordan did Jordan did weights, but Jordan never got big. These guys are just bigger, right? And so they're getting bigger and they're getting bulkier, which puts more problems on the tendons of your body because you're you're lifting more weights. Jordan went for ripped weights. Kobe went for ripped weights. He never got bulky and big. He got bigger than the skinny kid when he was drafted by Charlotte, uh, and so was Jordan. Jordan was a, a skinny. So they got ripped, they got toned, they got flexible, they did cardio for days. These guys are looking to get bigger, right? Um, and and it, 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 not, it that doesn't necessarily work in the game of basketball, okay? So I think that plays a part of it. So strength and conditioning, the trainers and coaches and staff um, have all have all kind of been uh, kind of conditioned to take their athletes in a different direction. So and that comes from the ownership to the executives to the coaching staff, to the players themselves. Um, there's a certain type of basketball player. Like, LeBron is the exception of the, the rule. He's huge. Yeah. And he's ripped, and he doesn't get hurt. He's the exception to the rule. If you could if you could build an ideal body for a basketball player, it would look like Jordan. It would look like Kobe. Magic wasn't defined. Larry had, like, zero muscle. <laughs> yeah. But these guys' bodies were conditioned for the grind of basketball. And I know people say, what about Larry's back? A back's a back. Nothing you can do about it. It happened to Mary Lemieux in hockey as well. So all I'm saying is a back is something completely different. If you look at the athlete of yesterday, Chamberlain wasn't built, Dr. J, Pistol P. We already talked about Bird. You can look, look at Ainge. And when Ainge played, I mean, he looked like, you know, an eighth grader out there. <laughs> but he could play 82 games plus the postseason. It's what's happening from... The executives, their analytics, and they're plugging in all these minutes in what they're eating, what it is they're lifting. They need bulk to, to be able to serve, and that's not that's not really the case. Uh, look at Devin Booker. Devin Booker's never had a bad injury. He's not a weightlifter. His body is conditioned for the game of basketball, and and to take the pounding of basketball. The same with DeAndre Ayton. The same with Chris Paul. 
Look at James Harden. Yeah, not fat James Harden, but James Harden. Yeah. Right? Um, he's not big and bulky. When you look at Steve Nash when he played, he was not big and bulky. Bulky. His body was for the game of basketball. The same with Dirk Nowitzki. The same with Dwayne Wade. The same with Chris Bosh. It's how you're conditioning your body for basketball, not for weightlifting, not for bulk and the rigors of it. So I think the executives are a part of the problem, if you want my honest answer. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Because I don't think it was like all of these condensed schedules. I think like what you're saying, your body should be built for this. They should be, especially with condensed seasons. Because it's not like you're going to play every single day. They have rest days also. But yeah, I think... Yeah, I, I don't say it was condensed schedule because we could say we had a James Wiseman injury, we have now Jamal um, Murray injury, we have all these different injuries, but that's the total of the game. But you really can't uh, go uh, by, that, by that. That happens with everyone. I mean, uh, what, what's to say? Look at Grant Hill back in the day, and his his career was completely derailed from the injuries. That has nothing to do with, with schedules and back to backs and, and all that kind of stuff. So, nope, has nothing to do with scheduling. Right, it's right. It's like also the same thing. They also. Said like traveling, but here's the thing: if you're oh, going by that, the like they said the NBA bubble was better. Actually, it wasn't really. So First of all, travel's ridiculous. They're not flying Delta. They're not going to uh, an airport. They're not going through TSA security. They're not waiting on connecting flights. They're not sitting next to a fat guy in the middle seat. These guys are on private planes with catered meals. They don't go through security. They got a luxury bus that picks them up from said private airport to take them to their five-star hotel for more catered meals, workouts, massages. All, oh, no, I don't want to say massages. Sorry, Deshaun. Uh, all <laughs> of those different things, right? So, yeah, forget that. Yeah, because like one of the things, even NBA builders injuries have. Martel Fultz, Jonathan Isaacs, those two, they were suffering injuries. So it's not like... They were everybody like, gets hurt. Yeah. Everybody gets hurt. It's a physical game. All right, big boy. Last one. I'm excited. And we like to call this segment Prediction Show to Go Wow, that was... I could have went longer on that. that wow. So I was an opera singer in the, my offseason. Now, prediction is sure to go wrong. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Well, it's time to spice things up, as you say. Predicting the games. And then the star players will average in said game. The first one on the docket, you got your Steve Kerr-led Golden State Warriors Versus my Doc Rivers, Philadelphia 76ers. Who you got and why? I got the 76ers winning by 12. And you may say it's you may say it's kind of extreme, but with Ben Simmons, Joel being all their talent, the Warriors have been up and down, injuries been plaguing them. I have win by 12, one of the best teams in the league right now. And I believe Joe and B is going to go for 27 8 and free. That means take your mortgage payment for this month, put it on the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry to lead all scoring. Prediction number two, Clippers versus the Blazers. Who you got? I have the Portland Trail Players winning by free just because I think both teams can be evenly matched out as things go. And I'm going to have Damian Lillard go for 22 4 and free. That, you know what that means, folks. <laughs> Take the Los Angeles Clippers, the Steve Ballmer led, and they're going to blow out the Blazers. Last one, Suns versus Celtics. Who you got and why? We're going to be a little biased here. I'm going to be going for my Phoenix Suns as we're going to be winning by seven. Devin Butler is going to go off for 33, 4, and 6. First of all, they are my Phoenix Suns. Don't you dare They're my uh, Phoenix Suns. associate yourself with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, look, I, I, I can't go. That's a big number for D-Book against the Celtics. We shall see. Any cherry on top for this week's podcast? Oh, I think we covered everything. I have no breaking news. The only other thing I have is that uh, Dwayne Wade bought a stake in the Utah Jazz, I believe. I think it was them. My only stake is going to be of a governor and someone else. He's going to try to like official roles now. Uh, of course he did. 
And there, ladies and gentlemen, is your woke. In any event, it wouldn't be a podcast edition if I didn't say this. Stan Van Gundy, you suck. Yeah. On that note, kids, you can find us on the Twitter machine. That's right, twitter.com slash courtside heat. Come on. Get out there on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Courtside Heat MBA, Facebook.com slash Courtside Heat, Parlor, P A R L E R dot com slash Courtside Heat, The Tumblr Machine, T U M B L R dot com slash Courtside Heat, Find us on Linktree.com slash Courtside Heat, Go to Medium.com slash Courtside Heat, I already said Linktree.com slash Courtside Heat, The YouTubeler Machine, YouTube.com slash Courtside Heat, The Rumble Machine, Rumble.com slash Courtside Heat, The Mothership, The Thing That Started It All. CourtsideHeat.com has got everything. If you want swag, we got swag even outside the game of basketball. You can also find the best in sports memorabilia from cards to OG cards to hats to starting lineups to books to DVDs to autographs to PSA graded. If you love Macari, we're there. CourtsideHeat.store. You can also find us on the eBay machine. eBay.com. Just do a little uh, search on Courtside Heat as one word. Courtside Heat, one word on eBay. Outside of that, you know where to find us. Let everybody know, rate, review, leave us comments. If you love us, tell us why you love us. If you hate us, bite us. We don't care. Until next time, he is the Father himself, Josh, saying goodbye. And everybody else, to quote the great Jim Rome, good night now. <laughs>